any programming language has already defined data types like int, char, float, or even double in order to store integer values, character values, or decimal values. Additionally, we have some derived data types like arrays and strings to group elements of same data type together. Now, the issue with arrays and strings is, however, that they can hold only variables with similar data types, while string can only hold similar character types. Now, in order to show similar kinds of data, arrays are used. However, have you ever considered whether there is a way to store data that is of different data type? Well, the answer is yes. Different kinds of data are stored using structures. The structure creates a data type for grouping items of different data types under a single data type. On that note, hey everyone, welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. In today's session, we'll understand all about structures, why, why they are used, how they are initialized, and everything in order you to get a comprehensive knowledge on what is a structure and how they are used. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. All right. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start this tutorial with a quick introduction to what is a structure and we'll move ahead and understand why we use a structure. And next, we'll understand how to declare a structure variables. After that, we'll understand how to initialize structure members. Once we are familiar with how to declare and initialize structure variables and members, we'll move on and understand how to access the structure elements. And finally, we'll look at the syntax and execution in Windows Visual Studio Code. So without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. All right, so what is a structure? Now structure is basically a collection of elements having same or different data type. So in a layman language, you can say a structure can be defined as a single entity holding variables of different data types that are logically related to each other. Now, all the data members inside a structure are accessible to the functions defined outside the structure. And in order to access the data members in the main function, you need to create a structure variable. Now, you will understand this when we get into the execution part. So, let's just understand what is a structure and how it works. Now, structures in any programming language, if you are using C or C++, is very helpful in cases where we need to store similar data types of multiple entities. So let's just take a simple use case scenario, a real life example. Now, if you want to keep a record of someone's uh, name, like age, roll number, you can do this by creating variables for the things like name, roll number and age to store the data separately. But what if in the future, you might need to keep adding data on a lot of people. So it implies that creation of variables for various peoples in different situation as per the need. So as in like, name one, uh, role number one, age one, or maybe a name two, address two, or a role number two, or age two. That is, you have to keep adding new data each and every time. So to avoid this, we can simply create a structure. So let's just take an example here. Uh, the structure syntax, which is defined with a keyword struct, which is S-T-R-U-C-T, and we are giving a structure name, which is S-T-U-D, and inside that we have mentioned various different types. Now let us move ahead and clearly understand the syntax of it. Now the syntax states that we have a struct keyword and then we are giving a name to our structure name. Now inside the structure we have data type and the members. Now data type can be of any type. It can be int, it can be uh, char, it can be float, it can be double and anything. And then we have the member functions. So you can give any uh, real life entity objects like name, age, address, roll number, uh, you know, marks, etc. So this is a simple example where we are storing uh, student details where we are creating a structure uh, named student. And inside that we are creating various different types of data members like name, roll number and age. All right, let us now move ahead and understand how to declare a structure variable. Now the syntax remains uh, more or less the same guys. So the keyword struct is used as a beginning while we are defining a structure. And then uh, we have the struct name. This is the name of the structure which is specified after the keyword struct. And then inside we are mentioning the data type and the member name. So the data type basically indicates the type of data members of the structure. And we are giving a name to this uh, data type which is a member. So it actually holds the name of the data member of any structure. And any number of data members can be defined 
inside a structure. Now we have basically two types of declaration of structure variables, which is declaring a structure variable separately and done in an inside uh, in the main function. So let's just understand the differences. So this is what you can do is we are basically declaring structures variables separately. So this way of creating structure, uh, structure variables is preferred when multiple variables are required to be declared. So the structure variables are declared outside the structure. Now you can see we have a structure, structure name student. We have the data members like roll number, name, age. And after that, we are mentioning the main function and inside uh, that is inside the main function and outside the structure, we are basically mentioning the variables. Now variables here is P1, P2, P3. Now it can store uh, the data of three different students. Let's say uh, uh, three students studying in a school like Kiran, Rahul and you know Kirti. So it can st uh, basically store the data of three different students. Now let's say if you want to declare structure variable at the time of defining the structure. Now this is another way. So the structure variables are declared at the end of the structure definition and uh, right before the termination of the structure. So in the above example, we have a uh, roll number, name, age and the, are the variables and which are, uh, sorry, these are the member functions and we have P1, P2, P3, which are the variables of the structure student. So I hope you understood how to declare a structure variable. Let us now understand how to assign members to our structures. So in order to assign values and access the members of the structure, we use a dot operator or an arrow operator. So the syntax is followed as structure variable dot structure member. So let us now just take an example here where I am taking a so in the above program, a structured name student, let's say is defined. It has three data members, namely name, roll number and age. Now these data members have not been allocated any space in the memory yet. For that, you have to create variables first. Only then it will allocate the memory. Now structure members cannot be initialized like other variables inside the structure definition. This is because when a structure is defined, no memory is allocated to the structure's data members at this point. Memory is only allocated when a structure variable is declared. I hope you understood, right? So what is happening? So the variable S1, which we have created as a structure variable declared in the, uh, let's say in the main function. Now, as soon as these variables are created, they get a separate copy of the structure's members with space allocated to them in the memory. So P1, uh, is basically accessing the copies of the structures member to modify them using the dot operator and finally we are retrieving uh, a variable which is s1.name so it will basically retrieve the uh, name as john so let's just uh, quickly again understand what is happening in the background all right so the syntax is followed as struct the tag name structure variable and we can give the values inside it. So I've created a structure student and we have data members like name, roll number and age. And then I am creating a variable which is S1 and it is storing three different elements that is Kevin 22 and 18. So when you retrieve, if you want to retrieve uh, the details, you can use the dot operator which you have used where it will retrieve the same for you by using s1.name, s1.roll number, s1.age and the memory it will allocate in a uh, continu not continuous but in a different locations as we are also uh, trying to store different data types. So that is how you can uh, initialize the structure and access the data elements from the structure. So I hope you understood the basics of what is a structure, how to create and initialize the data members and access them. So let us now jump directly into uh, Windows Visual Studio Code and try to understand how exactly structure is working with uh, help of some examples. So as you can see, Visual Studio Code has started. So let us now execute and perform a simple uh, structure with the help of an example wherein we'll create, a, let's say, employee structure and store his details. All right, so let's get started. So include the header file, which is include IO stream, which is must, otherwise it will throw an error. Next using namespace std. All right. Now let us uh, create a structure. So the keyword is struct. And inside that I'm creating some member functions. Let's say int, uh, let us take serial number uh, that is will be assigned to each employee in the company. So I'm just taking a serial number and I'm giving int employee ID. 
uh, let us take a string where it will store the employee's name. Uh, next, let us take another string and we will uh, store the uh, details of his city that is where he uh, belongs to. All right. And outside the structure, I'm basically creating a variable, two variables, or let's say one single variable. Uh, we are storing one employee detail side. So I just uh, create a single uh, one. So it is A. So next we have to create the main function and inside main function wherein we'll give all the details of the employees here. All right, so let's get started. So open these curly brackets and mention C out. Uh, wherein we will let's say ask to enter the data for the first employee okay you can give it uh, in your choice so i'm just giving it like this and uh, we want it to be in the next line so i'm giving slash n slash n is basically is used to insert a line break here all right next put semicolon Next, we will give the input for serial number. So let's ask the user to enter the serial number. Put semicolon. Next, we will ask the uh, user where it will write CNN, where it will take the uh, value from the user. Now you have to uh, call the member function. So for that, we have already discussed that we have to use a dot operator or a uh, you know point operator so i'm just using the dot operator here so it is a dot s number all right next we will write c out enter the id which is the employee id enter the employee id all right keep semicolon and we will take the value from the user so it is a dot employee id which is the member function again next again another c out wherein we'll ask the user to enter the name keep a semicolon and again c in which is a dot employee name which is again the name of the member function that we have taken semicolon and finally the employee ct enter the employee CT. So keep a semicolon and input the value, which is a dot employee city. So I hope you understood till now what we have done. So basically, we are just creating a structure uh, employee, all right. And inside that, we are creating some member functions like uh, serial number, employee ID, employee name, employee city, and then inside the main function, we are taking the values for the input. So keep a semicolon. Now we want to display all these values, right? So for that, I am using again C out out C out. So I want to display in a let's say a tabular way. So for that, I'm using the uh, ha slash n, which is used to again insert a line break and slash t, which is used to insert a horizontal tab. That is, you'll have a space between what you're entering. So inside the brackets, let's take two spaces first. And let's say data and I'm giving slash T so that it will insert a horizontal tab and employee employee one. So details of the first employee. So I'm giving it as one. So you'll understand uh, when we execute this, what is the idea be be uh, behind this? So next we also have C out wherein we are entering the serial number of the employee, right? So as dot serial number. And again, give space uh, slash t and input the uh, so we need to input the value so which is a dot s number. Sorry, we have to output the value so uh, outwards uh, arrow mark and we want to give a horizontal tab. So for that, again, I'm using slash t. So for similarly for the rest, also you can do so. I'm just copy pasting here it guys so to save the time. So for all the uh, three different four values you have taken that is serial number, ID, employee ID, name and city. I'm just giving, I, I'm inserting a new line and in a horizontal manner. So let's just execute this code and we'll see the output. So it is running the code. So it is asking to enter the serial number. You can enter serial number of your choice. I'm just taking my 1567890. 
Next, enter the ID. Let's take 18097 as the employee ID. Enter the name. Let's take Ravi. Next, enter the city. Let's take Hyderabad. And click on enter. So you can see that we have the output in a tabular form where it will say the data, which is serial number, which is 1567890. On the right side, we have the employee one detail showing in a uh, vertical way as we have uh, used the uh, slash t, which will use a horizontal input tab and it will differentiate. So in this way, you can use these structures uh, in order to create or store details of the people or any data that you're working on. I hope you understood this guys. So similarly, let us now go to another example and understand how we can use arrays with the help of structures. So wherein we will write a program in order to store the roll numbers of the students starting from let's say one, their name and the age of uh, five students and then print the details of the student whose roll number is two. So I hope you understood the question. So let's just uh, write the code for that. So again, include my stream. I'll just head of file again using namespace std. So firstly, we'll have the main function. So int main. Next, inside that, I am declaring a structure. Struct, let's say, student is our structure name. Let's keep it like that. And inside that, we have to mention the uh, data member. So I'm taking int let's take roll number as one of the data member let's take a uh, name right we need a name so i'm taking string name next we need int uh, so i'm just taking another data member let's say age all right and keep it keep a semicolon and then we need to create a array of uh, you know details for the student so we have uh, five students right so we need to basically input and store the details of by student so for that i am taking the structure student and i want to store in an array let's say stud we have five values in that all right so put a semicolon and then we need to run the loop in order to save the data so i'm using the for uh, loop here so for int i equals to zero i less than or let's say equals to 4 or you can directly say i less than 5 it's, it's, uh, it's your wish it will increment the value by 1 so that is a logic here so let's just uh, input the values and output it output them so i'm using c out out c out uh, let's take the student and then we will input it as i plus 1 so every students information will increase one by using i plus one command here so and we'll end the line there itself okay next we have to increment the value right of each roll number as well so student of which is the array uh, stud inside that i dot roll number there's a mistake guys uh, after the array you need to write the dot operator here and mention the roll number which will be i plus one so i hope you understood the logic that we are creating here it will basically increase the value of starting from one two three and up to five next we have to input the names so i'm taking enter the name and we will break it Next, we will take the value from the user. So I am taking C in and mention the array, which is stud value of i dot name. Okay, I hope you understood this. Let's move and write the for C out for age also. Enter the age. Keep a semicolon and end it. So I think we are good to go. Uh, we entered the name, enter the student. Now we have to run the loop. Now th this is basically we have created a structure of a student and data members, roll number, name and age. And then we are taking values from the user and creating a array here. So for that, I'm using a loop function. And finally, we have another condition where we stated that we need to only print the details of student with having roll number two. 
so we have to write a condition for that as well so the loop will check every time uh, whether or not we have a, a student having role number two so I, i'm writing a for loop again here so for int i equals to zero i less than or equals to let's say four it will increment the value i plus plus now you have to mention the uh, if if condition that is if the array whose array of the students who is having roll number as two then we need to retrieve those values so the syntax would be if inside the square brackets mention the array which is stud of i dot roll number dot roll number is equals to 2 so in that case we need to print the details of the student all right so i am writing c out mention student and mention the details it will increase the operator by 1 write nl and also the rule number mention the uh, structure we have taken that is i mean sorry the array we have taken again is theory of i dot number sorry roll number make sure you write the data members in the exact uh, same way guys otherwise it will throw an error so you need to again uh, go through each and every step where you're finding mistakes so it will take a lot of time so make sure you keep that in mind while uh, typing and similarly we will write c out name stu array name dot name and mention end line it will not add anything after that and similarly for age as well All right stud again i dot age i think we have added all the data members or the inputs that we have taken we are good to go now mention all the uh, flower brackets carefully otherwise it will again throw an error so you can write return zero if it doesn't uh, basically retrieve the values you can just retrieve zero so i hope you understood the query i um, mean the say old syntax guys so let's just execute this now so click on the execute button it will take time to run it so it is asking me to enter the name of the first student so let's take kiran as a name of student its age is 24 it is asking to enter the age of the next student let's take uh, 3 t and enter age let's take 25 third student name let's take as rohan his age is 21 and student for details uh, let's take another name uday and his age is 26 uh, details of student file let us give another name let's take uh, john as age is 27 so click on enter so when you input the values you will finally see that student 2 that is we are finding the details whose roll number is 2 so it is retrieving all the details of that student whose roll number is so the name of that student is Preeti and her age is 25. So in this in this way you can use arrays using the structures as well. So I hope you understood this uh, example also. So similarly we can also use uh, pointers with structures also guys. So I think it will be a lengthy video if I keep adding more and more examples. So if you want a separate and more uh, other examples if you want to discuss on structures let us know in the comment section below. We will try to uh, make us another separate videos wherein we'll only concentrate on other programs that are, are related to structures and i think with that we have pretty much covered everything about uh, the structures how to initialize them how to access the data members uh, within so now data stru structures are a very important part and a foundation of any data structure guys uh, so structures are used to overcome the shortcoming of data structure like arrays so basically arrays are used to store more than one data value of a single data type 
whereas structure can be used to group related data and pass them you know as a single argument to a function or create more complex data structures such as linked lists trees and graphs as well so this is one of the main advantage of using structure guys it will basically group all the related data it will also pass the data to functions as well so that it structures can be passed as arguments to functions allowing us to you know combine related data and pass it as a single entity so that it will make our code more modular and easier to read thank you for watching the video guys if you found this tutorial informative and helpful give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest stay tuned to the channel as uh, we will cover the next data structures which is another important one which is array in our next video until next time stay safe and keep coding